the really useful thing here, and this is one of the one of the key reasons to have and use objects, is that we can include functions in an object definition. In this case, we're going to create a new um, a new object. Again, we're going to create a new account object, um, and we're going to have the same variables. First name, last name, address, phone, all set to none. And then we're going to have a function. Um, to start out, the email address is not going to be set to none. What it's actually going to be, do, going to be set to is a function, using the does fun function, creates this function, um, which will return an email address. And what that does is it sets the email address by default to be the first name, and last name at website.com and then we have another function here that will display all of the data inside that function prints everything if we do account forward slash display it will print the name the first name the last name and the address and the phone number and the email address and that email address again is going to be gotten from a function that uses the other existing data in that um, uh, in that function. So when we create different objects, we're creating um, objects that have different data, and so those functions are only going to work with the data contained in those specific objects. Here we're creating a user1 object, which is basically just going to have all of those set to none by default. And here we're going to create an account where only the first name, last name, and phone number are changed. So the um, uh, the uh, address so here we put in the address is not going to be included. That's going to be set to none. And then for user three, we have all of the um, information changed. And if you look, we've overridden that uh, existing email address function. Um, the email address variable now refers to a specific variable that we're going to put in by default. Something different than what the function above will return, but the default function will return. So we can override the existing bits of data. And if we print out um, that data, again, we can just use the display function that's included in each of these um, objects. We're going to get different information because different, different data is contained in each of those objects. So here it goes through um, and prints goes to that function and prints all the data, which is none, none at each of these uh, items for user 1. And then it prints out the information for user 2, again with that function creating the email address. And then the last one, you can see the email address has been set, so it no longer uses that function to get the email address. It just uses the data which has been set um, to that word. That's one of the important uh, bits of uh, understanding about objects is that each of the objects contains a different uh, set of variables that we can refer to by using the name of the object forward slash um, forward slash and then the word contained in that um, in that object. Okay, this is a um, example of a game. Let's run it first to see how it works. Uh, what we're going to do is have several um, characters in a game um, and a default location. Each of these characters is going to have the same functions built in. Um, the way it works is like this. Uh, we're going to move a bunch of imaginary characters around the screen and um, some of it up. Um, and it tells us how many spaces we are away from. Uh, the hidden prize in this game. Each of these characters um, stores its existing position. So we moved character 2 up. So it's now at position um, 2 by 3 and it's 13 by 4 spaces away. So it's uh, quite a bit of spaces away in this axis and it's only one space away on this axis. And what we want to try and do is move one of these characters to the hidden prize as quickly as possible. So uh, it looks like the one that sort of splits the difference, gets us closest to um, the piece is maybe either character 3 or character 4. I'm going to move character 4 
and I'm gonna move it um, down. And we didn't, we didn't type a word, the word down, so it gave us a little bit of an error, which is included in this uh, in this program. That's one of the error functions. Character four now is six spaces and by two spaces, by negative two spaces away from the hidden prize. So I'm going to continue moving uh, number four. Um, I'm going to move that down. Down. And now it's five spaces away. And again, we can see it's maintaining the information about each of these characters. Now four spaces. If I was to move to move character one back, it would tell us uh, at this point that if I move it up again, now it's one more space away than it was before. I'll go back to playing the game. Character 4, down again, it's bringing us closer and saving those changes that we make each time to each of the spaces that the character occupies. We can move each of these. If I move the um, character 4 um, to the right, you can see it changes. Now it's three spaces away on that axis. Um, character 4 to the left, you can see it goes back to minus two spaces. Character four again to the left. Now it's minus one space. So it's in the same um, column as the uh, as the hidden prize. If we were to move this three more times um, down, we will be in the same space as the prize. Do this one more time. And we found the hidden prize because it saved that information and compared it to where the hidden prize was. And we had a number of characters, all of which had their location saved. Each of those characters is an object. What we did was we started with a hidden prize at a random location, 15 by 15, somewhere in that range, 15 by 15. Um, and what we're going to do now is create a ob uh, character object. We're making an object contains a number of variables. The uh, position variable we're going to start at uh, 0 pixels by 0 pixels and we're going to have a function which does this. It asks us whether we want to move up, down, left, or right and then based on the response to that ask question saved in the direction variable we're going to run a switch with a default and if it's up it's going to move the position of this object um, minus one by uh, by zero and if it, the answer is down it's going to adjust the uh, position in this way and left and right it will respond in similar ways moving it left to right um, and if it's not one of those answers like we saw in the uh, error catch I had typed in something other than uh, down and so it printed that that is not a direction that's acceptable and if now we have a function that, in that function, um, it checks to see if the position is the same as the hidden prize, and if it, uh, if it is, it prints a new line and tells us that you've won, and it halts the program and ends the, ends the program. Um, and then in either case, what, what it does is it prints all of the following. It tells us we moved our character, the amount that was moved, um, the direction that was moved, and um, how far away it is from the hidden prize. And that's the difference between the hidden prize location and our current position. And so that's the full object. And then what we're going to do is create five character objects based on that, um, that character object definition above. So the first character object is just going to be that default position 0, 0 with the existing function. And what we're going to do is create a second one, and the only thing we're going to change in that is the position of it. So this one's going to be 3 by 3, character 3 is going to be at six, 6 pixels over and 6 pixels down, and so forth. Each of these different character objects has a different position. They all contain the same function. 